So in this video today, I'm going to show you a real simple technique that helps you to take a dated ceiling like this with your popcorn, and we're going to add a smooth edge around the room. So stay tuned. This is quick and simple, but man, does it make your room look beautiful. All right, so a couple of things you need to do in order to do a smooth edge ceiling is depending on the height of your ceiling, if you're a regular eight foot, then a four inch blade is good. If you have a 10 foot ceiling with texture and you wanna do a smooth edge, you might wanna go five or six because after you do the smooth edge, you could also add a small crown. So you'd like to have a little bit of smooth edge after the crown as well. That's a preference for you, but basically what we're dealing with here is a popcorn textured ceiling. Now there's gonna be two situations you're gonna run into. One, it was just sprayed as a texture finish and then it walked away and nobody's touched it since. Or two, somebody's come along and done you a favor and painted it. <laughs> That's sarcasm, folks, because if this has been painted, it is a lot more work to clean off. Basically what's gonna happen is instead of this, you're gonna have up there like a chisel trying to take that all off. If it's painted, it doesn't come off clean and smooth like this, okay? That's really nice. And what it does is it leaves a little residue and you can take a little sanding block, give it one shot, and then you're ready to add a smooth finish. If it's been painted, you're going to be going two or three coats. You're gonna get ridges. It's a little bit of a mess, okay? So a lot more work, but if you have just a regular stipple ceiling, this is a quick process. You can run around the entire room on the main floor in just about an hour and get it all done. And this will take your house from about a 25 year old looking home to something that's very modern because new homes today are all about the smooth edge. And just while we're talking about this, if you have a new house and you've got a smooth edge ceiling, one thing in common that all new homeowners have is they have nail pops in their smooth edge. The funny thing is, I'm pretty sure this is where the smooth edge concept came from because the guys that are installing the drywall in new homes, all they do is take nails and hammer the ends in and then they screw the middle. Well, those nails inevitably always pop <laughs> and they rust and they discolor and they make a mess. So when you're doing service work, if you have a smooth edge, all that nail pop is in a smooth finish, it's easy to come in and reset the nail and then put a little mud there and brush on some primer and walk away. Because don't forget, your new homeowner warranty is just to restore everything back to prime and they'll leave it looking ugly. So you probably own a house with got a smooth edge full of little patches and primer marks, and you don't know what to do with that to make it pretty. Well, if you don't want to paint it all over again, you can use this technique. You can just take a little bit of compound after you've fixed it and do one more coat all around your room. It'll only take you about an hour. And so that's one way to make it look pretty. And you don't have to paint it when you're done. That's the best part. If you use the white compound I'm gonna show you, you get a nice smooth white compound with a soft texture. And if you have to do any more repairs after that, it's just touch it up with the compound no painting, no brush marks, no overlap. That's the way to maintain your home. Anyway, so let's get into the process here. We're looking for, and it's a little tricky because don't forget this is an inside corner. So there's paper joint here, which means it's not square, all right? It's gonna be curved at the top here. So that's why you're gonna get texture and you wanna use a little sanding. Set the corner in there. You might wanna even put a little bit of pressure on this edge just to define that line, okay? If you let it run wild, it'll go a little bit crazy on you. A little bit, speed is not the thing here, accuracy is. All right, there we go. Same thing going the other way, into the corner. A little bit of pressure. Maintain your line. Nothing worse with your smooth edge than having your line all over the place. Okay, just get your little bit extra. Now, the only other thing you need to do is for an inside corner, just come from the other direction, put a little bit of pressure on that blade, and that is it, okay? Take your sanding block, which is just a little bit shorter than your knife. This is about three and a half inches wide. That's why I like it, because I'm not really worried about sanding out at this edge. I want to sand out here and in the middle. So I can go right tight to the corner and get a nice clean edge. A nice clean edge here means that when I'm putting on my mud, I'm not gonna be getting all kinds of bumps and ripples which makes my process a lot faster. There we go. Just right in that corner. Now we're ready to add some mud. Okay, so a quick tip before we get to the mud. Sorry about that, but I just realized that if I don't show you about the outside corner, you're probably gonna run into problems. 
because you're using this knife here and you've got your force coming this way. And if you were to use a protractor and draw a line, that's the line that you want right from this corner. Okay. So you, if you do this freehand, you might end up coming out too wide. So what you want to do, set your knife there. All right. And really gentle, just like a protractor. And you want to just get majority of this work done. And in here, instead of one scrape, you're going to go three, four or five times. Move the pressure on the knife from the inside corner to the outside corner. Take a few passes, make sure it's nice and clean. All right, there you go. There's your secret. And then you come back from it from the other way. Make sure you don't go past the corner. And then you can just go this way to double check. There we go. Nice, perfect round corner. And then just continue making a mess. So this drywall compound, I'm using my sheetrock 45. I like to mix that stuff myself because I always have a bag on me because I use it for everything, including patching the walls. Speaking of which, I had one spot there I missed. And we're about to paint, so I better hurry up and let that dry. Uh, we have nice, simple corner. I'm gonna just run my knife in here. It's amazing how poor the mud job is in a house when they're gonna do a textured ceiling. They just know they're gonna get away with murder, so they just slap it all together. There are different colored compounds out there. There's white and there are beige. So you need to make sure that you're picking the color you want when it's dry. This particular compound um, here is dry and you can see how white, it's a solid white, flat looking, just a plaster look. You could use plaster if you like, it doesn't really matter. The point is you wanna just get a little bit on your knife, okay? And remember, when you're putting mud on, the pressure is even all the way through, okay? So it's going to go to the left and it's going to go to the right. You don't want too much mud coming to the right because you don't want to end up with a big, big ridge here. That would look a little bit gaudy. So I put it on my knife like this. Leave the end, okay? And you're just putting on barely enough to cover the surface. Okay? You see that? I'm not leaving anything on there that needs to be sanded off. I'm just adding enough to fill in all the little divots and then when I have it full I'll come back with a little bit more knowing that I'm forcing it outside slowly working the fill on the outside to my line trying to avoid getting a ridge there so lots of pressure here and what you'll find is you'll get used to how much pressure it's going to take to fill that nice without having a huge ridge and once you get that perfect blend, you'll be able to move a lot faster, okay? So here's the idea. Now I have a section that's done. It doesn't need to be sanded, but we do want to always come pull back towards the finished mud. It's a drywall rule. Always apply the compound towards the finished mud. And the reason for that is if you start here and go this way, you'll end up with a line. So start where you don't have any mud and then always pull back towards the finished area. Okay, and this is where the speed comes in. Once you get comfortable, you know exactly what you're going to need. Now, if your wall is a little bit ridgy because of the bad mud job, that's okay. We are going to come back with the sanding block, give it a quick scuff. It's not going to be very dramatic with the sanding though, okay? We're not trying to sand any of this off. We're just creating a smooth surface. There we go. So we're going to get the outside edge now. Very important, you want to have that line on this outside corner. Okay, when it's dry, that will look amazing. There we go, folks. Smooth Edge 101. Nothing really to it. Okay, so when you're mudding the outside corner, uh, it's the same process, but because you're doing a corner, you're going to have interesting issues with the pressure on your blade. So you might find that you're going to do too much. Okay, look at the line. There we go. Look at this. It's a little bit trickier. So here's the secret to this. Less is more. This is like painting. Okay? Less is more. Pay attention to one side of the corner than the other. So I'm going to focus on the outside edge first. Nice and slow. And I'm actually going to pick up any mud that's left over that I don't want on that ceiling. 
All right. And I make sure I draw my my straight line here. There we are. Now you'll notice on my hawk, I'm taking the mud out of this pile and I'm cleaning it off over here because I'm going to get little chunks of stipple and I don't want it in the mud pulling across and then dragging a line. So I'm going to sacrifice that three cents worth of mud and let it go to the garbage. Now this time I'm only putting mud on the inside of the knife and I'm going to focus on the inside of that corner. All right, now I'm having an issue here because the corner is taped really poorly. If you're having problems, you just come at it this way and this way and leave a little extra mud on there. Don't sweat it because when we're all done, we're going to come back with our sanding block and just a quick pass to clean it all up. So if you're having an issue with this spot and making it pretty and smooth, just put a little extra mud there. We'll sand it back later. No problem. All right, so we're at that point now where my 45 minute drywall compound is dry. I love using the 45 because I like to get on with my life. So now that it's dry, I'm ready to do some sanding. You're going to need to do a little bit. Like I said, when you remove a texture, you leave a texture. So now your mud isn't going to be perfectly smooth. All you got to do is run your sanding block into your corner and give it a couple of passes. All right. Nothing too extreme here. Just get rid of all those ridges, all right? And then you want to take the heel of this brush and you want to just put some pressure on it and drive it along that straight line. And put the pressure on the inside towards this area here and smooth out whatever's there. And if you're not happy with it, go touch it up again. There we go. Okay. Now, when you get started with this process, you might find you might need to go around the room a second time. Don't be disappointed. It's not a big surprise. Like I said, when you remove a texture, you leave a texture. So this might need a second application. That'll be really quick and simple just because you only have little imperfections that you want to fix. And here's a secret. When you get off your ladder, take a couple steps back, have a look from six or eight feet away. You'll be surprised at all the little things that are bothering you when you're up here nice and close you can't see when you're standing on the ground. And that is the rule of building. If you can't see it from six feet away, it's not a problem. <laughs> if you want to go through your whole house on a ladder and look for imperfections, you will be surprised what you will find, all right? So that's it, smooth edge in a nutshell. Remember, if you don't paint it, you can always repair it without having to paint it again. So keep it nice and simple. Well, that's it for the smooth edge video. And if you love this information, then love the video. Give us a thumbs up. We are big fans of interaction. We want to be in touch with our audience. We want to know what you're liking and what you're not liking. So in that vein, hit us in the comments below. Ask questions. We're here to help. Remember, I ask, answer those questions all the time. And check us out on Instagram. All right, we'll talk to you again next time.